This is the second part of my video on simplifying radicals. Just a quick review. Our goal here is to be able to rewrite any radical expression in simplest form. So let's remember what that means. A radical expression is in simplest form when, number one, all exponents in the radicand are less than the index. It's kind of what we looked at in uh, part one of this video. Uh, number two, all exponents in the radicand along with the index should have no common factors other than one. We also took a look at that in part one. What we're going to focus on in this video is number three, there should be no fractions in a radicand. And number four, there should be no radicals in the denominator of a fraction. And those are almost saying the same thing, but not quite. But uh, basically what we're going to focus on is the situation where we're working with radicals and fractions. What do we do about that? Okay. So let's look at a simple example, uh, the square root of 3 fourths. Okay. We have a fraction in our radicand. And anytime we see that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this instead of the square root of 3 fourths as the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 4. Okay. That's the quotient rule for radicals. Uh, this rule basically says that the radical of a quotient is the same as the quotient of the radicals. So whenever we see a fraction, we're automatically going to rewrite it and break it up into two parts. And then our next step is simplify any of these that we can. Okay, Three is not a perfect square, so the numerator is in simplest form. And the denominator, we do know that the square root of 4 is 2, so we can simply rewrite this as square root of 3 over 2. And we're done because uh, this expression meets all four of the criteria we talked about on the first slide. So sometimes it's that easy. Let's look at the square root of 5 sevenths. Again, we're going to use the quotient rule of radicals to rewrite this as the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 7. Now, unlike the first example, we cannot simplify either one of these. 5 and 7 are both prime. Uh, they're not perfect squares. So our goal here if we look at criteria number four, we're not supposed to have a radical in the denominator. Okay, A radical in the numerator is okay. We're not too concerned with that. But we cannot write this with an irrational number in the denominator. Square root of 7 is an irrational number. And we know that if we had a perfect square in the radicand, then we could take the square root of it. Now, how could we get a perfect square in the radicand? Well, the simplest thing we could do is multiply by square root of 7. Because if we take square root of 7 times square root of 7, that would give me square root of 7 squared. And we know that the square root of 7 squared would be 7. Okay. Now, this is a fraction. So if I'm going to multiply the denominator by square root of 7, I also need to multiply the numerator by square root of 7. And when I do that, in the numerator, I have the square root of 5 times the square root of 7, which is the square root of 35. And like I said, in the denominator, we now have square root of 7 squared, which is 7. Remember, this is index 2. The index and the power are going to undo each other, giving me 7. Okay, So that is how we take care of a situation where we have an irrational denominator that we cannot simplify. Okay, We multiply numerator and denominator by some radical that will give me a perfect square. In the case of a square root, we want a perfect square in that radicand, and that's what we did. And this process is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, It's a really good name for the process because we had an irrational denominator. Uh, we multiplied, and we got a rational denominator. Mathematically, all we're doing is multiplying a fraction by 1, because any time we multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, that's equivalent to multiplying by 1. Okay, So that's called rationalizing the denominator. Let's look at another example. The third root of 1 fourth. Again, we're automatically going to break this up into two parts. We'll rewrite it as the third root of 1 divided by the third root of 4. Now in the numerator, we have the third root of 1, which is just 1. And in the denominator, we don't know what the third root of 4 is. But we always want to think about factoring uh, any numerical factors out. It's going to be much easier for us to think of 4 as 2 squared when we go to rationalize this denominator. Okay. Now, what is our goal? This is a third root. 
which means we would like to have some factor raised to the third power. Okay? So what we would like to have is 2 to the third power in here because then the index and the power would undo each other, which is what I want to happen. Okay? So if you look at this, we have two factors of 2. We want three factors of 2, which means I need to multiply by one more factor of 2. Okay? The index here is 3, so this is going to work much differently than the two square roots I did before. If the index is 3, we want three factors in the radicand. So what you want to do is look at what you already have and figure out what's needed. Okay? Again, we had two factors of 2, we need one more. And whatever I multiply the denominator by, I have to do the same thing in the numerator. Okay? So in the numerator, I have 1 times the third root of 2, which is third root of 2. And in the denominator, I have the third root of 2 squared times 2, which is 2 to the third power. And the third root of 2 to the third power is just 2. Okay? I can't simplify the numerator, so this is my final answer. Okay? So what you want to do is use, let the index be your guide. The index is going to tell you how many factors need to be in that radical to get rid of it. So let the index tell you how many factors you need. Look at how many factors are already there and make up the difference. Okay? And then don't forget, whatever we do in the denominator, we need to do the same thing in the numerator. Okay? And that will take care of the issue of a fraction inside a radical. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples. Okay, so let's try to simplify the fourth root of one-fourth. Okay? Again, anytime we see a fraction inside of a radicand, we're automatically going to uh, rewrite it as the fourth root of the numerator divided by the fourth root of the denominator. If you can go ahead and simplify either of these, you would do so. Anything that can't be simplified, we're going to try to break down and figure out exactly how many factors we need to make this denominator a rational number. So if we look at the numerator, we've got the fourth root of 1, which is just 1. So I can clear that up. And then we've got the fourth root of 4. Now we can think of 4 as 4, or we can think of 4 as 2 squared, which is going to make this a little bit easier to simplify. So I'm going to rewrite this as the fourth root of 2 squared. Now to make this denominator rational, because it's index 4, we need to have four factors of something. We currently have two factors of 2, which means to rationalize this, we need two additional factors of 2. So if I multiply this denominator by the fourth root of another 2 squared, that would give me 2 to the fourth power and the fourth root of 2 to the fourth power is just 2. So to rationalize this denominator, I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by fourth root of 2 squared. So again, when we multiply these together, 2 squared times 2 squared is 2 to the fourth power, and the fourth root of 2 to the fourth power is just 2. And then in the numerator, all I have is 1 times the fourth root of 2 squared, uh, which I can write as the fourth root of 4. So this would be my final answer, the fourth root of 4 divided by 2. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's try the square root of 10 over x to the fifth power. Okay, square root of 10 over x to the fifth power. Again, we're automatically going to write this as two square roots, the square root of 10 divided by the square root of x to the fifth power. Okay. Square root of 10, can we simplify that? 10 is 2 times 5. There are no square factors, so uh, no, we can't simplify that. In the denominator, we've got the square root of x to the fifth power. Okay, we want to break down x to the fifth power and rewrite it in such a way that we can look for powers of 2. Okay, so the square root of x to the fifth power, I'm going to rewrite x to the fifth power as x squared times x squared times x. Okay, that would be five factors of x. And then we can take the square root of x squared, which is just x,
we can also take the square root of this x squared, which is another x. So I can take x squared out of this square root right now. Okay, so my numerator is square root of 10. My denominator is going to be x squared times the square root of x. We don't want to rationalize our denominator in the first step. We want to simplify our denominator first. And then when there's no more simplifying uh, that we can do, that's when we want to rationalize. So after simplification, all that's left is the square root of x. Okay? If I want to rationalize this, I need another factor of x, because another factor of x would give me x squared. And just like we did with these two factors, we know that the square root of x squared is just going to be x. Okay? So to rationalize, I'm going to multiply by square root of x in the numerator and the denominator. The numerator, I have square root of 10 times square root of x, which is square root of 10x. And in the denominator, I have x squared. And then when I multiply square root of x times square root of x, that's square root of x squared, which is an additional x. So if I have x squared, times the additional factor of x, that's going to give me x to the third power. Okay, so my final result here would be square root of 10x divided by x to the third power. Okay, remember our goal is to rewrite this fraction with a rational denominator, meaning no radicals should be in our denominator. Okay, let's look at one more. Okay, this is the fifth root of x over y squared. Okay, and again, automatically, we're going to rewrite this as the fifth root of x divided by the fifth root of y squared. Okay, the next step, we want to simplify these if we can. Can we simplify the fifth root of x? Not without knowing what x is, no. What about the fifth root of y squared? Okay, remember... Uh, Power of 2, that's less than the index of 5, which means we can't simplify that either. So our goal is to multiply by something to rationalize this denominator. The denominator has an index of 5, which means I need something raised to the fifth power. I currently have y to the second power. What I want is y to the fifth power, which means I'm going to have to multiply by y to the third power. Okay? We want five factors of y. We have two, which means we need three more. So to rationalize this denominator, I'm going to multiply by the fifth root of y to the third power, because I want to have a total of y to the fifth power. And whatever we do in the denominator, we also have to do to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply by the numerator by the fifth root of y to the third power as well. So now in the numerator, I have the fifth root of x times the fifth root of y to the third power, which would just be the fifth root of xy to the third power. In the denominator, I have the fifth root of y squared times the fifth root of y cubed, which is the fifth root of y to the fifth power, which is y. And again, that was our goal. Our goal was to rewrite this so there are no radicals in the denominator. Okay? So now I'm going to give you a couple to try. The first example I would like you to try is the square root of 11 27ths. And the second example I would like you to try is the fourth root of a squared over b. Okay, so hit pause now, simplify these as much as possible, and then hit play, and you can see if you did it correctly. 